we get lots of dollars to support 211 and other things. But there's room in the space for a lot of people because it is a very complex community. We have to earn people's money and their time and their advocacy every single day, every single hour. And if you focus on that, it's a little bit easier. These are not bad people. These are people that care about what they have on their agenda. As it relates to government, I would say again, government helps fund part of 211 that services, as I told you, 207,000 people. And so we engage with the staff, we engage with uh, leadership, because again, if the mission is to engage them in improving our community and using some of their resources that have been given to them, then it would be in our best interest to take those resources, be good stewards, have a strategic direction, not just throw them out there because the money's there. And in fact, one of the other responses I would say to you is that <clears throat> I guess maybe I decided and I encouraged some of our volunteers. I, I truly believe in a, in a volunteer-driven organization that the volunteers are the partners with the professional staff. But I also said, we're not going to get into businesses. We're not going to go into programs just to gain funds. We're not going to use government money as an ongoing way to survive. But we are going to use it to solve problems. And so we're not getting into programs and priorities just to gain money. That's easy. Back in the day, and I'm getting old with the gray hair, but, uh, and I know I've got 11 grandchildren, and I know, Rick, that you don't believe that. Um, I'm a young grandpa. But the fact is, <clears throat> there was a time in the United Way history that it was okay to give to anything. Nobody's yet asked me about designation. Same kind of concept. Some of the response could be, we're going to open up designations. Give to anything. It, it doesn't make any difference as long as we have a big number to announce. Wrong approach. We raise money with a point of view, with very laser focused strategies. We ask our partners to join us, but we're just not going to get in the business. Or the old saying, and I'm a sayings person, <clears throat> if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. As long as I have anything to do with staff and volunteer decisions, that's not going to be the posture we take. We're going to recruit hard the best of the best. We're going to recruit hard the best of the best volunteers because the combination of that, not giving in, not allowing to fall back, it's easier. The low road is easier for us. It's easier for anybody. Take them on. We're the big guys. What we say goes. It's only about us. That's easy. The really hard thing is to figure out how we can be like a person like my lovely wife, Louise, who has allowed me to do this crazy stuff that I do. She's a quilter. And if you know anything about quilting, it's about taking lots of different pieces of fabric and visualizing how it could look as a beautiful piece of art, as well as a utilitarian thing, that's what we do. It is about putting the pieces, the divergent pieces together, not always agreeing, but sure as heck not giving in for the low road. The high road is, high, is much harder. Being a good partner is hard. Every single day, every single minute, every single hour, at least for me, we're challenged with decisions. Decisions about what's right, what's wrong, what to fund, what not to fund, who to employ and who not to employ, who to collaborate with and not collaborate with. And I, for one, will always try to take the high road. The fact is that I can't speak for others. It takes two to tangle. But this organization is going to do everything we know how to do. We're not perfect. We're not even close. Um, we made a lot of mistakes. I've made a lot of mistakes. It's not a good day unless I make a mistake. But I can also tell you, in fact, I'll stop for one quick funny story. I got the privilege of being the staff guy in Danville, Illinois. 
real young in my career. As the, 27, I was the executive director of the Danville, Illinois Chamber of Commerce. And I remember going to that city the first week after being hired, and I had a radio interview at WCPN in Danville, Illinois. I don't know if they're on the network, but um, that's where it was. And the reporter, due diligence, new guy in town, head of the chamber, one of the, after the pleasantries, asked this question. Mike, so what do you think about public transportation? Having spent no time in studying the community whatsoever, not taking the time to learn the issues, not talking to anybody, I said, well, to some, public transportation is, is a necessity. To others, it's a pain in the butt. He was very cordial and he said, well, thank you for your position and your answer. And I walked out of that stu studio and I said, boy, are you stupid. Well, we've got to take some risk, whether it's reentry program, whether it's collaborating. You can't fight on the margins. You've got to fight in the middle of the game. And um, I also love football as well as all the sports. I don't believe in running between the 20s. I only believe in either three or seven points. That's how it should be. And it takes a whole community, a whole community. I don't care if we're talking about going after jobs, going after arts and um, culture. It takes a whole community to uh, engage and make a difference. And uh, we're just going to keep doing as best we can for the people of Greater Cleveland. So thank you. Thank you. Today at the City Club, we've been listening to a Friday Forum featuring K. Michael Vince, President and Chief Executive Officer of the United Way of Greater Cleveland. Thank you, Mr. Vince. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This program is now adjourned. For information on upcoming speakers or for podcasts of the City Club, go to cityclub.org.